there's been weeks and weeks, of course, if not months build up to this anticipation. So what we know is that uh, Israel has finally uh, attacked Iran, as we expected there would be. Both Iranian and, uh, and Israel have, Iran and Israel have both confirmed that. Uh, Israel has announced that they have, they're right now conducting precise strikes on military targets in Iran, is the way that they are phrasing it. Mm. Uh, Daniel Hagari, their spokesperson, uh, he says the regime in Iran and its proxies in the region have been relentlessly attacking Israel since October 7th on seven fronts. Uh, in contrast, Iranian state television, which is essentially government television, has reported explosions in several parts of the country, uh, including Tehran and also in the city of Karaj, um, which is interesting as to why they're targeting Karaj. There are uh, eyewitnesses in Tehran telling uh, Associated Press and others that they've heard about seven explosions um, some of those, however, could be anti-air uh, defence mm. systems. They're not necessarily all Israeli missiles landing. Um, and so this, of course, is in response to Iran's ballistic attack on Israel on October yeah. the 1st, which, of course, was in response to other things. And when that happened, I think some were expecting perhaps quite a swift response from uh, Israel. Why do you think it has taken them this long to, to formulate their response and to strike back? The delay has been because Israel wanted to get into place the THAAD anti-missile system, which is the thermal, uh, terminal, um, thermal high altitude area defence system. Now that is the United States system, it's the state of the art system, it's the best although Israel has the Iron Dome system, which you know from having worked there. Um, however, the, the Iron Dome system is most effective at shorter range missiles coming from Gaza or from the south of Lebanon. The THAAD system is state of the art. The Americans uh, installed that over the last few days, as well as sent about 95 American Pentagon personnel who are experts at using that. Now, that was in anticipation of Iran responding to this attack. Obviously, the Israelis were worried and the Americans that there would be longer range, more effective missiles coming from either Iran or from Lebanon. I've just returned from Lebanon, from Beirut. Hezbollah, of course, is in a war with Israel. Mm. Uh, Hezbollah is not at the moment using a lot of its precision uh, missiles. So Israel is concerned, I think, that they will be a two-pronged counter response from Iran and from Lebanon. The other interesting thing is there are reports coming through in the last few minutes that <clears throat> targets in Syria have been hit. Mm. Now, that could well be Iranian militia okay. in Syria. And in terms of that response, uh, do you think Tehran has any option but to respond? It all depends on the politics of it, and it all depends on the exact severity. It's about 4.30 or 4.45 a.m. in Tehran. We don't yet know the extent of the damage. Um, it looks at this point as if the uh, Israelis have not gone for either oil or nuclear facilities. The United States has been trying very hard in the last few weeks to urge mm. Israel not to hit Iran's nuclear plants and its oil plants on the basis that that would escalate things even further. If it is just on the military installations, uh, we still don't know that for sure yet. Early indications are it's not a broad brush um, attack by Israel. Then it may mean that Iran does not particularly launch any response which might de-escalate things. Neither Iran nor Israel nor Hezbollah wants this to be a full regional war. We've seen uh, Benjamin Netanyahu say in the past that you know his, his argument is not with the Iranian people. Do you think that sort of factors into his decision too if he's trying to drive a wedge between the people and the government that hitting civilian infrastructure, hitting things like oil, uh, you know, could be counterproductive in that way. It could be the case, but he has also said our argument is not with the Lebanese people, it's not with civilians in Lebanon and civilians in Gaza. Look at the sheer number, the tens of thousands of women and children that Israel has killed in Gaza. Now, having just come back from Beirut, parts of Beirut are now resembling Gaza, mm. the southern suburbs of Beirut. So, yet again, Israel is killing large numbers of civilians in Lebanon, as well as Gaza, as well as the West Bank. 
Um, there's been about 622 Palestinians killed since October 7 in the West Bank alone. The fascinating thing about what's going on right now, Nick, is with this latest attack, it means that right now, or over the last week or so, Israel has been bombing, or is bombing, uh, Gaza, the West Bank, southern Lebanon, central Lebanon, northern Lebanon, the Bekaa Valley, southern suburbs of Beirut, parts of Syria, and now Iran. It's quite extraordinary when you look at this in terms of the arc of history. This particular war now is, is unlike anything we've seen before.